Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe and come by the Rocket Chat channel just to tag up. So in the last tutorial, we discussed iSCSI targets and iSCSI initiators and how they're configured in Linux. So iSCSI storage is also a viable resource for Windows desktops. And iSCSI storage provides block-oriented storage, which appears like a physical drive. So this time, we're going to discuss configuring the Microsoft iSCSI service in Windows and connecting to our Linux iSCSI target that we created in the last video. Just as a review from the last video, we're going to go ahead and reconfigure a new Ubuntu target for our iSCSI connections. So first of all, this is a virtual machine and not a LexD container because you need to have a virtual machine to be able to uh, mount and access devices. So first of all, we're going to do an LSBLK and you'll recall in the last video that I had an SDB device that was 10 gigabytes and in this video, I have an SDB device that is 20 gigabytes and 18.6 gigabytes once it's connected to the system. In order to make this system into an iSCSI target, the first thing that we have to install is the target daemon. And we do that with a sudo apt install tgt-y just so it doesn't prompt us. We're going to clear the screen with the control L and we're going to go ahead and say sudo systemctl status tgt just to make sure that our tgt daemon is up and running. And you can see here that it is enabled and active and running, which is a good thing. Next, we configure our iSCSI target for our Windows client to connect to by editing the file iSCSI.conf. And we're going to go ahead and paste that target in here. So I have a comment about this, and that is that you notice that there's an incoming user and incoming password. So win-user is the username, and supersecret17 is the password, what Windows refers to as the secret. Now you can't appreciate this, but this is take number 46 for this video segment. And I absolutely cannot get the Windows username and password working correctly for authentication to the iSCSI um, service here. And so although I can document it and show you that it exists here, it does not work consistently. And since it does not work consistently, I really can't, in fairness, uh, recommend using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a control K and eliminate that line from the configuration file. So if you're in a home lab and you're configuring this, um, you probably don't have to worry about somebody else accessing your uh, iSCSI drive. But if this iSCSI drive is running over a public network or if it's running over a um, uh, network at a company, then you're probably going to want to find a way to do this. So I'm going to do a control O and hit enter. And I'm going to do a control X to exit the nano editor. Since we made a change to the targets configuration file, namely we defined it, we have to do a sudo system CTL restart on the TGT service before those changes can take effect. Here we are over in our Windows computer, which will be the iSCSI initiator, and this will be the machine that connects to the iSCSI target or server on Ubuntu that will be offering the iSCSI disk space. So we want to right click on the start button and go up to device manager first of all. In Device Manager, I'm going to open the disk drives area, and you can see that right now we only have a single disk drive. 
Next, I'm going to open Control Panel. And in Control Panel, I'm going to type in iSCSI. And then I'm going to click on Setup iSCSI Initiator. It gives you a pop-up saying that the iSCSI service is not running. When we click Yes, it will load it up on the system and it will subsequently load, be loaded at each reboot. When the iSCSI Initiator Properties screen first comes up, it will come up in the Targets tab. You want to move over to the Discovery tab and then click Discover Portal. And here you're going to want to type in the IP address of your iSCSI target, which is the machine that we just configured on Ubuntu that is offering our iSCSI disk drives. So here I'm typing in 172.16.1.90, which is the address of my iSCSI server. I click OK. At this point, you want to go back to the Targets tab and your target should be listed correctly. There's my target LUN IQN. Here I want to go ahead and click Connect. It will provide another pop-up screen. And when I click OK, you should see it being added to the disk drives here in Device Manager. I click OK and there it is. At this point, we're done with the iSCSI Initiator property screen, so you can click OK to dismiss it. If we launch this PC, you're not going to see the new drive, and the reason for that is because it has not yet been initialized. Right-click on Start and go up to Disk Management. In Disk Management, when it comes up, it'll say you must initialize a disk drive before Logical Disk Manager can access it, and you're given a choice of a GUID partition table or a master boot record partition table. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the default at the GPT partition table and click OK. At this point, the drive is unformatted. We want to go ahead and right click on the drive and click on New Simple Volume, which puts us into the Simple Volume wizard. So we click Next and we can uh, allocate this volume to be the entire available space. And I click Next again. And then it asks if we want to assign a drive letter and I think that the drive letter I for iSCSI sounds really good here. And then I click Next, and it says format this volume with the following settings. And I click Next, and then I can click Finish, and it goes ahead and formats the drive. As soon as the drive's formatted, it pops up here as New Volume. Now, of course, you can right-click this and go down to Properties, and you can highlight the new volume and say iSCSI storage just to remind you what this particular drive is and I click apply and I click OK to dismiss that screen and there's our new storage iSCSI storage drive I we can click on it and of course right click and say new folder and create data on it at this point and it is accessible like any other drive on your system that you had installed via hardware. So in summary, by default the Windows iSCSI service is not running. Windows allows for the discovery and adding of iSCSI targets. And you can add an iSCSI target as a favorite in the iSCSI Initiator Properties. And Windows Disk Management allows you to create a partition on the connected target, at which time you can format it and also assign it a drive letter. So iSCSI is a viable way to provide additional block-oriented storage to Windows without adding new disk hardware to your system. Anyway, that's it for today, and please subscribe and like to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time.